With more and more leaks coming out about the Valve Decker, there have been more and more discussions and speculations about the headset. But one specific topic has been louder and more annoying than all others. Which type of tracking will it use? And it seems there are always two camps. The one set of people that wanted to have inside-out tracking, similar to the Quest 3. This means having a number of cameras on the headset which then look around the player and therefore allow the headset to track its own position using the visuals from the camera, alongside using some infrared lights on the controllers to track these in relation to the headset. This technique is called inside-out tracking. The other group, however, wants to stay with the old Steam VR tracking system like we've seen on multiple headsets, the most notable of which is this one, the Valve Index. For the index tracking to work, the user must first place two or more of these boxes called lighthouses in their room, preferably far up in the corners. They also each need to be plugged into a power outlet. This entire method of tracking is then commonly referred to as outside-in tracking because of the external sensors that the index uses. But which of these methods is actually the better one, and more importantly, why is that a trick question? Hey there, I'm Magnus, and this is my attempt of an analytical evaluation of VR tracking systems. So stick around and I might just be able to show you that some of the most common beliefs around VR are actually completely wrong. On paper, both tracking methods are valid choices with advantages and disadvantages. If you listen to any discourse online, these quickly become apparent. Inside-out tracking is simple, not requiring any external setup, but lacks in accuracy and tracking range. Range meaning how far behind your back, for example, you can move your controller before the headset stops seeing and therefore tracking them. Outside-in tracking then has the advantage of having a way higher tracking range and accuracy, with the trade-off being that you of course first have to set up the boxes in your room and connect them to power. So from what it seems like, casual VR players are better off with inside-out tracking for its simplicity, whereas hardcore VR enthusiasts would rather stick with outside-in tracking, and again, looking at online discourse, that's usually what it comes down to, with Index users and Quest users fighting over which technique is better. And every time I see one of those discussions, my blood starts boiling. Why? Well, this is where the myth part comes in. Say it with me now, kids. Lighthouse tracking is not outside-in tracking. So yeah, hearing this, you will likely have had one of two reactions. Well, duh, or wait, what? If you're in the former camp, stick around because I do actually have some interesting numbers to show. And if you're in the latter camp, I owe you an explanation. Unlike popular belief, the lighthouse boxes do not actually track the headset or anything for that matter. The way they work is that they send out a beam of infrared light through some very fast rotating wheels, almost like a lighthouse. This light is then received by the headset and controllers using an array of infrared sensors. While these are pretty well hidden on the index, the original HTC Vive made it very easily apparent where these sensors were, causing its somewhat iconic Swiss cheese design. Moving on however, after receiving the infrared light, the headset can then use some complicated math to calculate its position relative to the lighthouses. The deciding factor here is what determines the headset position, and both the Quest and Index determine their own positions using external reference points. The only real difference is what they use as reference points and how many they use. So while the Index looks for the lighthouses, the Quest instead chooses its own reference points from its camera feed. So hopefully we're all now on the same page. Lighthouse tracking is inside-out tracking and always has been. But that still leaves two important questions open. Firstly, does outside-in tracking even exist? Well, yes it does. Or rather, it did, for a very short time. In fact, there are only two commercial headsets that ever really used it, and both of them were quite early in modern VR history. The first was, coincidentally, the first real consumer headset. The original Oculus Rift was a true, honest-to-god, outside-in tracked headset, and I believe also the reason why these days so many people still hold the misconception that the Index is one too. After all, both came with a set of two external sensors. The real difference here though is of course that the sensors of the Rift contained infrared cameras and therefore had to be connected to the PC, unlike the lighthouses which only ever needed power and didn't communicate with the computer at all. Another thing making the tracking technique in the Rift obvious can be seen in many videos made of it. It's covered in IR lights. Now these can't actually be seen with the naked eye, but most cameras in phones or otherwise could see them clear as day. And so of course could the sensors for the Rift which used these to externally track its position. However, this was the one and only device by Oculus using the technique as their next release, the Rift S, already switched over to inside-out tracking, something that started off the huge wave of hate against it, likely due to it being very rudimentary and the device generally being not very high quality. Speaking of non-high quality headsets, the PlayStation VR. Not only did it offer the worst resolution ever seen in a commercial VR headset, it was also the only other headset that ever used outside-in tracking. Only one question remains then. Since all modern VR devices use inside-out tracking and it's still such a big point of discussion, which of the techniques is actually superior? So I did the legwork and read an honest-to-god scientific paper with the alluring title of Comparing the Accuracy and Precision of Steam VR Tracking 2.0 and Oculus Quest 2 in a Room Scale Setup. Sounds exciting, huh? 
Well, it isn't, but it's very informative. The first interesting thing I found was that when comparing technical data, they accurately assessed SteamVR tracking as being inside out, once again reiterating my previous point. Moving on to their testing methodology and simplifying it a bit, they built a carriage with markers so that they could consistently move the headsets around and compare their reported positions to the actual one. It should be noted that instead of an actual VR headset, they used two Vive trackers for the lighthouse tracking. These used the exact same technology as the Index though, and the fact that they had two of them allowed them to rule out any error on their part. So, what were the results? Well, we have two different tests. Tracking accuracy and tracking position. Accuracy just means how close the measured results were to the actual position, whereas precision means how consistent the measurements were. After all, if the headset tracking is perfectly spot on on average, but the controllers constantly jitter around, it doesn't help you much. And the results showed? The Quest 2 tracking clearly beat the SteamVR tracking, with accuracy being seven times higher and precision being about three times higher. To give some specific numbers, the SteamVR system was accurate up to about 7 mm, while the Quest was accurate to a single millimeter. Now, of course, both of these are definitely precise, and I'm not claiming otherwise. And even with 7 mm off, the index is still perfectly playable. But with a 700% improvement, anyone claiming that the Quest tracking was less accurate is simply wrong. And anyone that understands the technology even somewhat should already understand why. Tracking accuracy is largely determined by the amount of reference points. Why do you think film productions put hundreds of trackers throughout a room when filming something for CGI? The cameras of the Quest could theoretically use hundreds of reference points throughout your room, so it's no surprise that it's more accurate than the two that an index uses. And in fact, you can increase the accuracy of the index tracking by just adding more lighthouses. But of course, that doesn't just add a considerable cost of about $150 per piece, it also means you have to install it and keep it plugged into a power outlet. But don't think I've forgotten you, dear Index owner, who is so keen to remind me that the Index's tracking range is superior. And yeah, I agree. Somewhat. One of the legitimate advantages SteamVR tracking holds over inside-out tracking is the previously mentioned tracking range. Put a Quest controller behind your back or too far out to your side and the headset won't see it anymore, and before long tracking will be lost. Whereas with the Index, even behind your back, the controller can still track itself as long as it has sight of the two lighthouses. But I have two rebuttals to this, and especially to the people claiming that this is reason enough to stick with SteamVR tracking for the future. First is interpolation. Modern VR controllers have a huge variety of very high quality sensors in them, including an accelerometer and gyrometer. Using these, the headset can estimate the position of the controller even after losing sight of them. If I purposely obstruct the Quest's controllers, for the first couple of seconds, tracking goes on just like normal. In fact, I could barely even notice the difference. A few seconds later, however, we start to see the controller drift off until it completely loses tracking. And I want to reiterate that this is the worst case example. And for most real world uses, such as grabbing a magazine behind your back or hitting a large swing in Beat Saber, I'd argue this is more than fine. But I also strongly believe that anyone that claims this method doesn't work very well for 99% of use cases has simply never used a modern Quest device. But then there are two still groups of people left. Those that just want the best accuracy possible and the VR chat players. Those latter ones especially love SteamVR tracking because of its ability to use external trackers like the Vive trackers I previously mentioned. And yes, I do have to admit that the current Quest tracking system, due to not seeing most of the user's body, fails in that regard. At least in theory. In practice, we already have a partial solution that offers the best of both worlds. May I introduce the MetaQuest Touch Pro VR controllers. In addition to having a name whose length could rival some ingredients list, these controllers are self-tracked. That's right, they themselves have cameras in them, just as the Quest headset does, and so they essentially have the best of both worlds. The super high accuracy of the Quest, alongside the perfect range of the Index controllers. In fact, the Index controllers range is far from perfect, as they struggle with only one lighthouse. So even in normal use, holding the controller before you, sometimes they lose tracking. But even disregarding that, the Quest Pro controllers are simply an all-around upgrade. In fact, they are so accurate that they come with stylus tips which you can insert in the bottom to have them function as pressure-sensitive digital pens. Something that simply wouldn't be thinkable with the 7mm accuracy of the SteamVR system. So what's the catch? Well, there isn't really one. For a Quest user, $250 might seem high for a pair of controllers, but considering they are still cheaper than a pair of index controllers, which isn't even including the lighthouses, that is actually a very fair price. Now, the one thing we are still missing is official Quest Pro body trackers for the VRChat players. There are some alternatives that work on Quest, but these apparently work on motion estimation instead of real tracking, and so I don't think they're an optimal solution. But now that this script has already reached 6 pages when originally I wanted to write no more than 2, 
I want to conclude that this video is not meant as an attack on anyone that owns an index or likes the Lighthouse system. Currently, it's still the only system to offer external trackers and of course, it's nowhere near bad. I'm not advocating for all index users to throw it away and buy a meta quest. What I am trying to do is firstly, fight off the myth that SteamVR tracking is not inside out tracking and secondly, show a clear path for the future. I believe it's quite obvious that Valve is not planning to go forth with their Lighthouse system and the fact that the Valve Deckard is planned to be standalone means it will have to be some similar way to the Quest 3. But yet I still see people advocating for it to use SteamVR tracking when in all reality it has outlived its time. It was good while it lasted but we've come a long way with classic inside out tracking since the original Rift S. And if anything those hardcore VR enthusiasts should demand self track controllers if they truly want the best of both worlds. But of course I am anything but stubborn and as one should tend to change my opinion over time. So if you have any arguments I may have forgotten or a rebuttal to anything I said, please go ahead and write a comment. Also since people will forget if I don't mention it, if you did enjoy the video consider subscribing. As my history shows I upload about two times per year so I promise your feed will remain unspent. And of course if you watched up until this point, thank you very much for watching, I appreciate you very much.